A model steam engine test plant, part 20. Preparing and painting the upper water tank with etch primer, making a steam turret, incorporating a displacement lubricator, and cleaning the old live steam injector in a small tub of acid. I've disconnected the live steam injector piping and removed the tank from the pedestal because I want to paint it. I don't know why really, it just doesn't look right in copper and the piece of copper tubing that I used was badly marked. Once more I fit the copper tube into the chuck of my smart and brown lathe and support it at the other end of the live centre. And I'm cleaning up the copper, or should I say preparing the copper for paint using a piece of 180 grit emery cloth. Whenever you paint metals, it's a really good idea to scratch the surface to key the paint. And this is especially true with copper and brass components. To clean this area of the tank, I stopped the lathe and did it manually. Once I'd finished the job, I then had a good idea. Recently, I bought an orbital sander. Why not just use that? The drug that I'm taking, which is part of the hormone therapy for prostate cancer, does actually make me very forgetful. It's not old age, honest. I'm now in the outer part of the workshop and I'm going to paint this piece of copper tubing with some self-etch primer. First of all though, I shake it up for a lot longer time than you're seeing here. These are called rattle cans because inside the can is a small ball and as you shake the can, the ball agitates the paint and mixes it inside the can. The instructions tell you to shake the can for at least three minutes and to be honest, usually I make it to about two minutes and then start painting. It's really important not to apply too much paint at one go. I'm slowly working my way around the tank, which gives the paint a bit of time to do what is called tack off, go tacky and not run. The odd thing about this self-etch primer is when you apply it, it doesn't apply very smoothly, it doesn't dry very flat, but when you put the top coat on, all is well. I'm not sure what's going on here. The good thing about this stuff is it sticks to bare metal really well and because it's an acrylic paint it doesn't disturb any existing paint on the metal. You can rub it down and make it a lot smoother than it is but I don't see a need because the top coat always dries perfectly. Maybe I could apply some normal primer over the etch primer then apply the top coat of paint over the normal primer but I don't need to do that, it seems to work fine as it is. Time to look at a displacement lubricator. As this is a steam engine boiler test plant, I decided to use a glass displacement lubricator so that the oil level was always visible. I have used them successfully in the past and they are from microcosm-engine.com. The microcosm website is well worth a look because they do make some nice things. I don't like the design of the inlet union. When you get these lubricators, the fittings are not particularly tight and they move around. I don't want this to happen, so apart from the two O-rings, I'm going to use some Loctite 542 and tighten the fittings securely. And this should stop any movement. I use Loctite 542 for anywhere where there's likely to be a leak. As it is a thread sealant, it generally tightens up threads. I was going to use a couple of aluminium washers, but they didn't look right, so I'm not going to use them. This clip shows the lubricator back together and there is no perceptible movement of the inlet pipe. While I've been showing you the displacement lubricator, the bandsaw has been cutting this piece of square brass. I've sort of estimated the size, this looks about right, and if it looks right, then for me, it generally is right. I can't leave the ends rough sawn, so I put the piece in my Smart and Brown lathe chuck. This is a large four-jaw self-centering chuck, and it's great for turning square pieces of metal. I machined a register on the other end, you'll see why once it's finished. Although you can't see it very clearly in this image, the camera's in the wrong place, but take my word for it, I'm centre drilling the end of the brass block. The end where I machined the register, that is. I'm going to drill a hole nearly all the way through the brass block, but not quite. The hole size is 9 30 seconds of an inch because I'm going to thread this quarter by 40 threads per inch, which is the same thread on the end of the inlet pipe for the displacement lubricator. I screwed the lubricator into the block as far as it would go, and that showed me that this part needs to be the top. 
I'm not going to show the drilling and threading of all the holes in this block because I've shown in the past on many videos how to make these turrets. And this one is no different. I've marked out the positions for the taps. These are quarter by 40 taps because all of the piping on this boiler is 5 30 seconds of an inch. Here's the kit of parts minus the block to make this useful displacement lubricator steam turret. In this clip you can see that there are two holes for the steam taps and then one hole that goes all the way through. Three of the holes in the block are for steam fittings. The one underneath is where the mounting column will screw into place. I never really gave much thought to the final position of the lubricator when the turret is finished. If you look at this image you'll see that it's totally wrong. I need to turn the taps around to face the other way and likewise with the lubricator. That way everything will be in the right place for the job I want it to do. I'm using this lubricator in single ended mode. It's not going to sit on a steam pipe. And rather than make a cap for the other end of the pipe, I just put a stainless steel ball into the cone and fitted a union nut, a perfect seal. This is the approximate position on the plant where the turret's going to be. I'll do that in the next episode, which will be, I think, the final episode. I removed the cones from the live steam injector and put the body and the cones in some acid in an aerosol can cap. This is an old injector and although it works, I think there is some lime scale inside it. Hardly surprising as it is over 30 years of age. And just like me, it still works. Well, most of it anyway. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.